Hi everybody, I'm Rudy from HPV Pro Sales Group. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, Vacarac's newest line of combustion uh, test instruments. Uh, this particular version is the uh, PCA 400. Um, it is a commercial, uh, industrial uh, type analyzer for sensor capability. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about and then we'll uh, open it up. Um, they've really upgraded the uh, hose and probe assembly on this. You'll see it in just a second. It's got a very nice uh, one-step plug in the uh, probe and plug the hose into the bottom of the instrument. Um, it's got a really easy to read uh, display um, and this is a touch screen display. Uh, so you can either, whatever whatever you're most comfortable with, you can either use the uh, touch screen or it's got a complete keypad that uh, operates most of the uh, uh, features also. Um, it um, right now has a two different uh, carbon monoxide sensors. Of course, there's an oxygen sensor, and the thing to mention about it is that it is a. They're expecting the oxygen sensor life to be about seven years, which up till now has been uh, totally unheard of. Uh, it's warrantied for five. Uh, the CO sensor. There are two different options. Uh, one is a zero to ten thousand ppm uh, carbon monoxide sensor. The other is a zero to uh, forty thousand. PPM carbon monoxide sensor, and down the road, uh, the, one of the nice, other nice features with this is that the uh, firmware, uh, you know, in years past, it's always been an EEPROM, which meant once you burnt the uh, program to that EEPROM, uh, it was there, you couldn't change it. Now, these newer instruments uh, have more like a thumb drive in them, uh, so as they upgrade the firmware, uh, you can very easily download the uh, latest firmware version off the back of Crack's website, no charge. Um, and have the latest uh, version of the firmware on your instrument. Uh, so there's a couple of changes that they've already got um, uh, in the works. Uh, one of the changes is a dilution technique where uh, you can, where you will actually read 10 to 20 or uh, zero to 10,000 ppm uh, CO directly, um, and then at 10,000 ppm another another internal pump will kick in, uh, dilute down that um, CO reading. Um, and it'll give you a calculated CO reading up to uh, 20,000 ppm for the low range sensor, uh, up to 80,000 ppm for the high range sensor. Um, and then it's also going to uh, be compatible with a NO sensor, an NO2 sensor, and an SO2 sensor. Um, all of those, uh, uh, you know, depending on the application that you need. These instruments also have uh, uh, available a B-Smart uh, sensor program. Uh, what that means is that you should never have to send this instrument into Baccarat to have the uh, sensors calibrated. Uh, what you do is you order up a uh, calibrated B-Smart sensor, get on that program, and what will happen is you'll receive a sensor in the mail, and we'll show you how, to, how you install the sensor. Uh, you just basically uh, swap the sensors out, and you'll be good to go. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, uh, and open it up here. I'll take the sleeve off first. Here we go. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, Viton tubing. Um, this tubing is necessary if you ever think you would need to or if you order the instrument up uh, to do NO2 or NO. Um, if you're just doing uh, basic uh, combustion tests and burner setups with this uh, without ever needing to measure NO2 or um, uh, SO2, uh, you can just get the, uh, the uh, Buna N type tubing, which is just the standard black tubing. Um, you could also, uh, you could uh, with that uh, with that type tubing, you could also measure uh, calculated NOx and just put the NO sensor. Um, uh, this has got the hose and probe assembly with the moisture trap and the filter. Uh, you'll also notice that um, there are two plugs on each end. Okay, one plug goes to the uh, probe. You'll notice they're color coded just to keep it easy, uh, blue to blue, and you just plug it in. The reason they've done that is that. Um, there are two other uh, probe assemblies available with different lengths. One is 24 inches, uh, the other is 36 inches. Um, down the road, if you needed a, um, a different uh, length of probe, you could very easily squeeze those two metal uh, pieces together. Uh, you could very easily replace the uh, probe with uh, whatever meets your application. Um, so we'll go ahead and plug that in. Then on the bottom of the instrument itself, uh, you'll notice that there's a gray socket. Uh, the gray socket corresponds with the uh, gray into the uh, probe uh, hose assembly. And then again, you just uh, line it up, plug it in. It's as easy as that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and power it up. Off-on button. Uh, your, uh, you know, your standard uh, off-on. 
sound symbol. Uh, we'll just press that button for a second. You'll hear the uh, pump fire up, and it's going to start counting down to um, allow the sensors. It'll count down for one minute. Uh, to allow all the sensors to power up and stabilize. The other thing too to notice is during the countdown you'll see where it says CO Auto Zero. That's a feature that's uh, unique to Backer X uh, analyzers. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, as we go through the menu. So we'll uh, let it finish uh, powering up and uh, we'll take a look at the, um, at the actual functions of it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, walk through the uh, uh, main menu together. Um, I went ahead and disconnected the uh, hose and probe assembly so that uh, just to make it a little more maneuverable while we're talking about this. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can either operate the instrument through the touch screen or it has a fully functional keypad also. In fact, you can even uh, bounce back and forth. Let's say, for example, I wanted to uh, set the uh, fuel type to uh, propane. Let's say I could uh, hit the uh, icon to get to the fuel type. I can scroll down to propane and then this center button down here is, is sort of the enter button. Uh, now it's uh, set up for propane. Uh, the settings uh, tab, uh, pretty self-explanatory, that's where we run through uh, you know, the date, the time, the temperature units, pressure, uh, pollution units. Uh, uh, you can also uh, put a username, um, uh, uh, like a company name for the uh, printout. Uh, right now this is set up to do the uh, IR. Printer. Um, it's also set up to do a Bluetooth printer, and down the road there's going to be some uh, uh, smartphone apps that you'll be able to uh, update uh, your instrument to be able to do. Um, that's coming up uh, probably in a couple of months. Uh, uh, we can talk a little bit about that later. Um, inactivity timeout, uh, that's just uh, how long uh, the instrument will run, uh, um, you know, without being, but when you haven't touched any buttons before it'll shut down just to uh, conserve the battery power, and by the way, this has two, uh, two ways of uh, powering, actually three ways of powering up the instrument. Uh, the USB uh, port on the side of it can be directly powered up, uh, and at some point we'll open up the back of it here. There is, uh, the sensors are up here, um, and then down here right now there's a lithium ion battery in there that you'll get between 12 and 14 hours of continuous use out of. And if for some reason or other you don't uh, want to use that lithium ion battery, you can actually unplug it and there's a space provided to plug in four AA batteries. So however you want to power it up, that'll work. Um, okay, so we'll back out of this. This is uh, kind of the, uh, um, the um, button to do that with. Uh, uh, calibration. Um, the password is 1111. Okay. Two. Um, the way this instrument can be calibrated, one is with the Be Smart program. Uh, what that entails is uh, you'll get on a uh, Be Smart uh, program, and when you need the calibrated sensor, um, it will come in the mail to you, uh, and you simply uh, uh, tap Be Smart. Okay, there will be a code on the uh, sensor. You just enter in that code, um, and uh, the instrument will be calibrated. Like I mentioned earlier, you should never have to. Uh, send in uh, one of these instruments to have it calibrated. Uh, the other option is just to do it yourself. We can go down, say we want to calibrate the CO sensor, we'll go down, select CO, hit enter. Um, this uh, CO sensor is hydrogen compensated. Uh, that's a whole other uh, uh, <laughs> video. Um, generally, you calibrate these with, say, 500 ppm CO, and then you would have another tank of 1,000 ppm CO with 1,000 ppm hydrogen. Uh, that just gives you more accurate um, uh, carbon monoxide readings. But let's say we just wanted to do the CO only. Uh, we just tap on that. Uh, the uh, applied number uh, is whatever your tank of gas uh, uh, needs to be. Uh, it just defaults to uh, 500. Uh, you would hook, the, two, hook the, um, uh, the calibration gas up to the instrument. Measured is what it thinks it's seeing. Uh, applied is what's going to be on the tank of gas, so we know what it is. And after it runs for about three minutes and that number, that measured number stabilizes, then you would just, I'm not going to do it now because I will send it out of whack, but all you'd have to do is hit enter um, and that will um, uh, calibrate the instrument. So we're going to back out of that here. Uh, then uh, T-Stack, uh, you could either, um, most folks have a, uh, a thermocouple simulator. Uh, that you would use um, uh, NO, NO2, you'd have to have uh, 
uh, calibration gas with that if you wanted to do it yourself. But I think yeah, probably um, mostly what's going to be done is people um, uh, getting into the Be Smart sensor program. That just makes things really easy. Uh, so we'll back out of that. Uh, then we go up to the uh, measure screen. This is where we get to the uh, uh, combustion, uh, or you can do pressure, or temperature, or whatever. Let's go ahead. The most commonly used screens are likely going to be the combustion screen, um, and you can say this is this is where we are um, on the combustion screen. Uh, you can see the uh, fuel type up is up up in the uh, left-hand corner there. We're on propane. Uh, right now, the uh, blower icon has, is red with an X through it. That means that the pump is on hold. Um, and over here is the battery um, uh, indicator. Um, those are the parameters that this instrument uh, is capable of measuring. Uh, and you order it up specifically with, uh, with NO, NO2, uh, SO2, uh, high range CO, whatever your application is. Okay, then uh, the next uh, tile we'll look at is the um, uh, memory. Uh, if we touch the uh, memory screen, uh, you can see we've got uh, um, uh, different uh, files and folders to uh, uh, document, uh, record uh, different um, different buildings, different boiler numbers, uh, whatever kind of identifying information you want to include. Um, and you know, you just go down here, hit the menu button. Uh, let's say if we wanted to add a folder, uh, we could come up and uh, you know you type in the name or the uh, uh, boiler number or whatever identifying information you wanted to include and uh, there are 500 different uh, memory locations that you can uh, uh, have on this instrument um, and then uh, to document stuff again the U this uh, USB port on the side of it you can download all the uh, test results to a computer uh, so you can keep track of this stuff um, you know, just whatever whatever uh, uh, fits for your particular application. Uh, and the status, uh, that's just uh, keeping track of the pump hours, instrument hours, the uh, diagnostics, uh, sensor information, all that kind of, uh, uh, maybe for some troubleshooting if you ever needed to, you probably won't need to get into that screen. Um, and uh, that's kind of a brief run through. Uh, you know, the one thing I did want to mention that I alluded to earlier uh, this would be in the settings uh, feature. There's this CO0 function. Uh, that's one thing that Bacharach does real differently than any other manufacturer. Uh, if you remember when we first uh, turned the instrument on, it said uh, a CO auto zero in the display. Uh, what that means is that, and that's how all these instruments are shipped, um, Bacharach's the only company that uh, allows you to change that to what's called a manual zero. Um, and what that means is that uh, um, if, let's say, if, if we have it set for an automatic zero, what that means is that if there was, say, you know, 40 or 50 parts per million CO in the mechanical room um, and you turn the instrument on, the instrument's going to assume that it's uh, zero uh, in the auto zero setting. Um, if you have it set for a manual zero, uh, when it finishes that 60 second countdown, it's going to come up and say 45 or 50 ppm, whatever. Now, this is not a personal protection uh, device, but that's designed in there just to give you a little bit of a uh, heads up that uh, there may be something going on. And what you would do to set it to a manual zero is you just uh, uh, adjust the uh, display, so you highlight manual zero, you'd hit enter and then you would need to go to fresh air outside or somewhere where you know the air is clean and uh, hit OK. It'll run for 60 seconds and then from then on it'll do the manual zero. And I'm not so that's sort of a brief run through of the some of the features of this instrument. Um, if you go on Backrack's website uh, you can actually even download the uh, full operator's manual. Uh, take a look at that. There's also a quick start guide, all sorts of information that you might find helpful. Uh, so I uh, hope this has uh, given you the information you need on this instrument. Uh, stay tuned and uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate your time.